Greetings. So we've had the behind the scenes laughs of me not getting on par with my uh, new headphone, but it's going to be a good one tonight. Okay, and you have to put up with normal shenanigans of Vanessa, not quite navigating things properly. But welcome, it's the Global Health and Wellbeing Cafe. We're sharing happiness habits. I'm delighted. It's the last Thursday of the month and that you are here with me. Welcome. All right, so as I said, I'm happy you, you are here. Get settled if you've got a drink then that's great. If you want to grab a drink, then uh, please grab one. I'm going to leave this um, camera up. I normally put it on talking mode, but I've realized that it does, it does show the presentation quite nicely, so we'll leave it on. So tonight's presentation is being recorded, so please switch off your video if you do not want your image to be captured on the screen. Please put yourself on to mute. There will be time for questions and answers and discussion. And you can use the chat function at any time during the call. And we're gonna be on the line till about half past nine. So relax, this is a lovely evening. You should be in the best seat in your house. And we're here to uh, get to know each other and have some fun. So your expectations, I, can, I can't see everybody's face now or names. I know I've got some regulars with me, but I do realise we have new people on the line. So you're very welcome. If you wanted to unmute yourself, particularly if you are new and you just wanted to share what your expectations are from the event, I have put up some prompts here. Or if there's something else that I haven't mentioned, please feel free to share. Oh, it's quiet. <laughs> All right. Any any of our regulars wanting to say anything about what? Why why have you come back? I love you, and it's great to see you. But what's brought you back? Dorothy, <laughs> I can see you when you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> um, ooh, uh... Well, it's a night out, isn't it? <laughs> it's a night in. <laughs> night out in. <laughs> night out in, exactly. Nearly the end of the week. Yeah. Hopefully you learn something new. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, greetings. I'm your host. My name's Vanessa. Uh, you will see me put my name up as Vanessa Mary, but you can call me Vanessa. I'm a lifestyle coach for women, especially mums, and I'm helping women to boost your confidence and showing you some really practical ways that you can keep your body, your mind and your soul in top shape as you work around your busy lifestyle. I just wanted to share my story with you quickly. I do have a background in um, project management and event management. Uh, but what I'll say, because I actually still do work in that field, and what I'll say what I don't like about my job is um, it's quite a um, sedentary lifestyle. So I'm sitting down for too long in the day and I want to be active. So you might be able to see there's um, a shot of me with lots of mums being active. That's what I love. I've been running fit camps. I've been running different types of events over the last eight years women moving and I love it. <clears throat> now I am an independent distributor of Herbalife um, Nutrition and I found Herbalife after listening to some personal development with a man called Jim Rowan and I'm so excited about the future because I'm coaching more women in different aspects of their life and I have an opportunity to show them how Herbalife's amazing products can actually be woven into their everyday life to give them a boost um, with their nutritional goals. Okay, so that's me. As I said, um, I mainly work with women and I'm on a mission because I have a very strong vision to support 
and empower women. So the photographs that you can see, I mean, the one with uh, lots of cute little babies, all of these babies are now toddlers because that was taken in uh, 2020 before the situation that we're living in. Um, but I'm still on that mission. So a lot of my work's now done online. And I don't know about you, but I've had an amazing April. I really hope that you've had a brilliant April as well. What's happened is I was able to reconnect. I hope you can see this because I've got this, uh, this video thing here. Um, I was able to reconnect with some of the mums from the Pramford community at my son's second birthday. I've launched a coaching and accountability group. Uh, so I've got some of the women on the call from that group. Um, I've launched a woman's education and empowerment program with our guest speaker who's on the call. And also we've got Susie and Layla on the call as well. So it's been fantastic to work with some of incredible women who have been doing great things over the last month or so. And we've actually launched a weekly get together and it's called a divine cuppa. So there's so much going on. It's, you know, like I said, I'm so excited about the future. And if you're just here for the first time getting to know me, I hope that you're gonna stick around because there's lots and lots happening and I'm sure that there'll be something for you. All right, so part of my mission is to support children as well, the women. And um, being a Herbalife distributor, we have the Herbalife Family Foundation, which is very well established. Herbalife as a company has been established for over 40 years now, and we've been supporting children for a long time. But I have done some donations to a local charity. Uh, well, it's not local to me because it's actually in the Gambia, but uh, one of the leaders of the charity lives in the city where I live. And um, it's been fantastic, but I haven't been active for about a year now and I've been really thinking about it. So if you are ready to have a mighty May, I would love for you to join me on a sponsored walk. Um, as you know, being active, it just gives me, well, it gives me joy if you don't know that I'm telling you that now, but if you are active, it can really help to boost how you are feeling about yourself. Now, one of the things that I like to do is check my steps daily. So I was having a think about what could I do that would involve people that are in different locations because this event's online now, uh, you will be dialing in for, from wherever you are in the world or in the country. And I'm just hoping that I can inspire you to get active and raise some money for the two charities that I've uh, shown you on the other uh, screen. So what I'm looking to do is it's a 10,000 steps a day challenge for 30 days and it will start from the 26th of June so that will give me enough time to promote what I'm doing and to get some sponsorship in and if you'd like to join me in that then please leave your name in the chat you know give me a shout out in the chat if you can do it as a private message if you're new to me uh, to give me your contact details and I'll let you know uh, what well, is not really much to say about it. It's just like you're doing it and I'm doing it as well. But we're going to have like a proper space. So we'll be doing it maybe in my Facebook community. Um, so it's something that I'm really excited about. OK, so about tonight, we like to do some personal development. And this is where it's interactive. So again, if you are new, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're a regular on the call, then please feel free to, you know, participate in this se uh, section because it's nice when we're all speaking with one another. Then we're going to hear from the guest speaker, Denise Mustard, who's an emotional fitness coach and she's got a fantastic talk for us about how you can get more connected with the universe. So I'm really excited about that talk. Then we're going to have a short break. After the break, we're going to look at some transformations, and this is uh, physical, excuse me, transformations of people that have been using Herbalife Nutrition for their fitness and um, energy goals. 
then we're going to talk about health hacks. So if you've been coming on the call for a while, you'll know about the series. Tonight, we are going to talk about bone health, which is really important. We're not having a quiz uh, because I've got a very exciting announcement that I'm going to uh, tell you about, but we are having a raffle. Now, the raffle is for you to have a one-to-one -one session with Denise. Now, if, if you haven't entered the raffle yet, um, I haven't actually even put the link together. <laughs> so I'm going to grab the link, okay? So you will have up to nine o'clock to enter the raffle. It will take you literally about a minute just to pop your details in there. We'll draw the raffle. And then what we like to do after that is I just tell you about one of the products um, that I've spotlighted for the month, how you can get started with me if you're interested in herb life nutrition. And then we do some networking. All right, so here we go. This is the personal development section. And then uh, tonight it's, it's about how changing your mindset will help you to change your life. Now, as you know, um, Jim Rowan helped me to change my life by finding Herbalife Nutrition, which has just been a fantastic journey for me. And I'll tell you more about that later. And I put his quote in because I love this quote. It says, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. And for me, this quote is about how you can empower yourself to be the gardener of your own mind and how you know sometimes we can get influenced by um, other people or situations and it can actually um, really put us in the wrong direction for where we want to go in life. So the question that I want you to think about particularly if you've got a goal in mind already so hopefully you've got a goal in mind if you're in the group coaching and accountability a group and I know that you've got your goals all set out um, but for, for those of you that are new just think about something that you a result that you want to achieve in your life and then I want you to think about what isn't working for you right now and why maybe you feel that you are not on track with that result so we're just going to spend a few minutes having a quick conversation about that. Uh, so um, it'd be great to hear from anybody in the accountability group about how you're doing. Now you shouldn't, you, things should be working for you. <laughs> so maybe share the goal that you've been working on. That would be lovely to hear from you. Dorothy or Susan. No one's been working on their goals. <laughs> Well, do you know what? I've not been in the group this week because of the telephone. So obviously I've not been there to sort of like uh, that little nudge like I should do. It would be interesting for me to know how they've been getting on. What do you do to um, keep yourself like on track? Well, personally, I work on my goal. Well, I write out my goals every single morning um so this is part of my devotion time uh it's part of my journaling time and I feel that to have the focus on what I'm working on really helps now in terms of my mindset my mindset is paired with personal development what I've been doing over the last week or so is listening to more metaphysical development because thoughts become things and it's really important. I was even having a conversation last night with one of the women in the, well, in fact, in the nutrition club. And she said a statement where I just have to like say, you know, we have to watch our words because words have power. So yeah, in terms of my mindset, I'm very aware that it's something that I'm cultivating every single day. And the more layers of information that I find out helps me to reset and refocus so it is it's it's like my nutritional journey to be fair um, my nutritional journey is something that's with me every day so my mindset development is a daily activity um i'm only just going back to the gym because the gym has recently opened and i i had a giggle with you um on the call that we had recently where i said 
gym is already empty. And that's because many of the people who really had that influx at the gym, what was it last week or the week before, they probably had the attitude like they were going to get quick results. But it doesn't happen like that. Whatever you are trying to do in your life, you have to be prepared to roll your sleeves up, actually get into some momentum, find a way where you can be repetitive because it's the re repetition that is actually going to help you to move forward. So even though you may feel as though things aren't working, and this is where the gym analogy comes in, you don't go to the gym and get that figure straight away. You have to keep working at it. And ob obviously you'll know this, Denise, as a personal trainer, um, but, you know, anybody who comes to you for personal training and is literally wanting that instant result, it's not going to happen. It's something you have to be regularly um, doing. So, yeah. <laughs> That's me. Does anybody else want to um, give us some thoughts on maybe what you are changing in your life and, and how that's working out? I've got my goals, but Hi, I've, um, I've kind of slowed down on them because I'm sort of thinking it's not a sprint, it's um, a marathon. So I've, um, I've got a list of goals. And I've kind of like scheduled them for, say, one a month. <laughs> Brilliant. And I've got a daily uh, routine of things that, at least five things that I've got to do every day or that, you know, I, I want to do. So, and I just feel happier, probably because of lockdowns coming to an end and, just getting more out and about and seeing people and doing stuff in the garden. So um, I've changed my mindset to a more positive one. Fantastic. <laughs> and your group has helped, Vanessa. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Well, it is called My Happiness Habits. Yeah. So it should be working. <laughs> Thank you. Are you sure. really good with the water? Are you, are you keeping up with your water as well? Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. fantastic. Well done. Brilliant. Okay. All right, then. So we'll move on. So oh, that leads me neatly into a quick plug <laughs> for our wonderful group. So yeah, the group's called My Happiness Habits. It's a group coaching and accountability club. And what happens is we gather online on Zoom. But before uh, we come together as a group, the individual women have had a clarity call with me. So they have an action plan, they've had a goal setting sheet. And uh, for those who want to get more intensive work, they're having um, what I would call personalized worksheets as well. And there is one-to-one -one coaching available within that. So I am offering anybody who's on the line now or listening to the recording a 14-day complimentary trial. Um, it was fantastic to hear from Susan then because uh, for many of the women that have come in, I know that their goals, they vary. And what normally happens is I'm on the WhatsApp with them. So it's almost like 24-hour coaching <laughs> where I post some inspiration in the morning and then in the evening, I just ask everyone to check in with me uh, and each other, because uh, that's what moves us as well when we're getting encouragement and celebration from the other women. Just to say, you know, what have you been doing today? And, uh, you know, how are you feeling about that? If this is something that you're interested in finding out more about, then please send me a message, just send me a private message in the chat now. Or if you're listening to the replay, my contact details are going to be coming up uh, towards the end of the call. So you can get in contact with me about the My Happiness Habits group. All right. So now enough of me. <laughs> it's time <clears throat> for me to take some notes. So if you do have a notepad and paper ready, I would get that out. Take some fantastic notes. We're going to hear from a woman that I've met online. I cannot wait to meet her in person. 
She's absolutely fantastic. Her name's Denise Mustard. She's an emotional fitness coach. Um, I would just say that for me, <clears throat> for any of you that have been reading my newsletter, you'll know that I was feeling stuck at one point. And when Denise and I connected, the healing that she gave me, which was over the internet, I don't even know how she managed to do it, but I felt absolutely fantastic that next day. And you see that everything that I've achieved in April and Denise has been very much a part of that the energy and the drive that I've been feeling, you know, it's a combination of everything, you know, the personal development, my nutrition, but I also feel that once you get into the momentum of connection with source energy which is going to be part of Denise's talk um you, the elevation and what you can achieve is just magnificent Denise I'm going to hand it over to you um you're going to share a slide aren't you so um, um, yeah I've got a presentation you've got a presentation yeah. okay I'll stop the slide here and then I'm going to have to make you the host. I'm so rubbish with these things how do I do it Okay, yeah. So you are now the host, me. So if you want to put your screen up, uh, it's over to you. Full stairs, you can all stairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, I don't do Word, I do Canva. <laughs> so how, I, um, obviously it's, Vanessa had sort of uh, stated that uh, how, how are we connected to the universe and, and how can we be connected to the universe? It's, it's a kind of um, a plethora of things. I'm going to really talk about um, my own experience and understanding of it um, and, um, and also the, the practical aspects of it. Um, it will make sense as we go along. But... Um, I've been a coach for like four years. And as Vanessa mentioned, I've been a personal trainer for a good, good time, <laughs> good long time, a good 15, 20 years. And um, for me, it's been a bit of a process to get to this point and, um, and learning how to do the coaching um, almost has been like, when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you do something, you just know there's a sense of knowing. But then I was wanting to understand well, what does that actually mean? So that's basically what I'm going to be talking about, um, as well as helping you understand how you can connect more with the universe. I hope that makes sense. So energy body. So the, over the last like good few years, um, one of my friends, when, when we've never been talking, she's like, well, energy is everything. And I'm like, hmm, you know, we're all connected. And I was just like, Oh, are we? I didn't really know, but I didn't say anything. I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, totally. And um, but it wasn't until I really started investigating um, the angelic realm, um, the uh, the chakra system, and also um, understanding what it actually meant to connect. Because I was like, I kind of was almost coming from a place of lack, um, and I was like, well am I connected? I didn't really know whether I was. Um, and when I was doing my sessions, um, I didn't realize that I was actually connecting with these um, energy bodies, right? So we've all heard of the, the chakra system. Um, they are, the, the, each chakra um, creates a ball of energy that is a conduit to the global matrix system. So um, what I'm going to be talking about is explaining that system in, I guess, more detail, but also um, how these systems work. Um, and so obviously the chakra system feeds into this energy system and it provides you with that vital force energy um, that you receive from the global matrix. And um, with that, there is the etheric body and the etheric body is in essence, um, your energy field or your aura. Um, and then you have your emotional body. So the emotional body is, is all your, um, well, when you feel your emotions, where do you feel it? You feel it in your body, right? So um, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling anxious, there are different parts of your body that you feel triggered. And this is often through memories. And so um, all of these processes, including the mental body, um, I was coaching people through, because you know when you, you feel, sometimes you feel something within yourself, sometimes you feel something, out with yourself 
like there's a sense of knowing or there's something that feels like it's hanging over you so you don't necessarily feel so this is all part of all those energy systems where those energies can lie so um the mental body um stores and transmits thought patterns and uh, mental processes which also trigger the emotional response within your body uh, the causal body is your your true soul your higher self as well as being connected to the collective consciousness uh, and then you have the higher mental body which is linked to your heart chakra and it's your ability to receive information from like past life karmic patterns um, and then obviously your soul and spiritual body and divine body so in essence when you're going through this in order for you to um, really um, connect to your life path connect to your purpose you really have to work through these energy bodies to um, raise your vibration so that you can um, get, gain more, more information from divine, more source energy, okay? So once obviously, you know, you kind of thought about what well, energy is everything, the universe, the bigger picture. So how, how do we harness that? What is, what is the universe? Like what is going on? So I went back to the big bang theory, let's see. So the Big Bang Theory is, we've all heard of it, so it's, it wasn't an explosion, it was just the heating and cooling, like a lava lamp. And that heating and cooling created atoms and stars and galaxies and eventually us. Um, and so, and so um, the way that we know that this happened is through this cosmic microwave background, right? So. This is the early, this is like literally the early stages. So they don't know how this big bang theory happened, some quantum thing trigger and, you know, we have what we have now, all the planets and stuff. And um, for me learning this, because this cosmic microwave background exists here. Like we have cosmic, like where you're sitting right now is the cosmic microwave background. And so, like, you know, I don't know if, but you, but when you think about it, like infinite universe, infinite soul, it's always like, oh my God, my mind is blown. Like you can't even comprehend like infinite. Right. And so sometimes as well, like living in the human experience, you kind of think, okay, well, like you kind of, you forget that you're even on a planet. So then to think that space is here on earth, <laughs> that, that was like, oh my God, that's so weird. But obviously not weird because we're a planet, but um, that's what that meant for me that would like, obviously that the universe is in, in, in this space as we speak. So, um, this is found on the, I feel like I'm just going to be chasing this around the screen, electromagnetic spectrum. So as you can see, this is, this is us here. Um, and so we are bioelectrical beings and we have frequency and the higher we vibrate, um, the lighter we are the better we feel and the more connected we are to source. Um, and uh, the astronomers, um, Penzia and Wilson, I can pronounce that right. They won a Nobel prize for um, discovering the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So because we're bioelectrical beings, um, we have to be um, really kind of cautious as to where our energy is and what like what we expose ourselves to um so it's important just by looking at it that you can you can see where um the phone frequency 3g 4g 5g wi-fi systems these are all electrical currents that will affect your body and so it will affect the way that you um connect to source so why is this important so the global matrix is made up of two energy sources, the telluric current and the ionospheric current. <laughs> so a um, bit of a tongue twister. So these, these two currents, um, I'm going to move you here now. And what is the telluric current? So the telluric current, um, Again, going back to the fact that we are bioelectrical beings, the Tulip current is um, electricity that is generated from the core of the Earth. So the, the Earth has a magma core and 
there's so much energy there that it, it has it's created electricity and that electricity by the time it comes to the the surface it's not as obviously strong as what it is at the center of the earth um but that gives us um that current where we ground ourselves on right um and we have to be um mindful of when we are disconnected with our body with ourselves and um and this can come up in different ways like not feeling emotion to um just feeling disconnected to even physical pain um when i was doing uh, posturology and um, this was a realignment of this current within our body through the senses through the eyes the feet and um and obviously, if you've got metal in your body, like, I mean, a lot of uh, people have had, I don't think they do it anymore, mercury fillings. They thought that was a good idea. Um, braces, bones broken, plates. These all affect your currents, including like watches, like I guess like this, iPhone watches, you know, the, the these are all currents that actually um, affect your body. Um, and, um, one of my clients who suffered a lot from, with back pain, like really bad back pain. And we'd done a session and she was feeling good. And, and I've worked with like Parkinson's M, like ME and um, scoliosis. And like within like the first session, just that recalibration really just settles the body. And um, but a few months later, she was just like, she called me, she's like, Denise, I can't move. I'm in so much pain. I don't know what's happened. So I, I can rush over and she's just like, oh. and uh, I was like, what have you done differently? And she's like, I've been doing everything. I was like, yeah, but what have you done differently? You know what turned out that she had done that was causing her that much pain was a bracelet, a, a metal bracelet that she got for her birthday. And as soon as we took it off, the pain went. As soon as she grounded herself, the pain went. So this is how important it is even like a wedding ring or jewelry can really cause you physical pain. And again, it can cause you to, to, to get disconnected with, um, with yourself. So um, I would recommend you, if you can, obviously when it's cold, it's, it's not great to get your feet out on the icy, uh, icy grass, but you can actually um, get a copper wire and put it in the base of a tap and, and bite on the wire. Obviously you're not putting the wire in an electrical socket. So you just put it on the base of the tap and that will um, ground you. Like if you hold that for two minutes, that will make a massive difference. But obviously walking on grass is easier. So the, the uh, ionosolar currents is uh, 500 kilometers um, around the earth. And this actually stretches out till 10,000 kilometers up into the universe, right? So that helped, that's, in order to connect to the angelic realm, um, that 10,000 kilometers will, will connect to the star systems like Lyra, where um, the, um, the angels, um, archangels are connected to. So they will come down there because they're light beings. They have hold a vibration. And through this matrix, uh, this grid, they're able to then connect with you through your chakra system. So um, the clearer your chakra system are, your emotional body, the more you're able to then connect, vibrate higher and um, connect to the universe. Because also with the emotional body um, and just your, your, your lower uh, uh, mental body, what you say to yourself, what you feel about yourself is, is felt. And um, if you feel something, it's going to reverberate and you're, you're communicating directly, right? Um, obviously things that you don't do, like action is really important. So if you, um, in order to create something, you have to do action. You can't just ask. It's not a wish. It's not like a well. So our ancestors, so through this process, I found that the, our ancestors um, use the earth for healing. Um, so obviously they did the grounding. Um, they use crystals, uh, which represent the bones, uh, water represent blood, and um, trees represented the lungs, and obviously the, the core magma, that's a heart. And so for me, it just felt like we used to have it right. You know, we, we used to, 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 to ground ourselves, to, to take in the sun, like 
caveman um, would lie in the sun for 20 minutes a day because they knew the benefits back then <laughs> of vitamin D. Um, so it's almost like we've become so disconnected to how we are, we live. Yeah, it just, it just seems like anything other than uh, taking a pill is like, it's just frowned upon, isn't it? It's like, what, you, you, you want to use your own immune system? This, 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 this can't be right. So um, if we can actually heal ourselves, the energy that we can get um, from the earth, from each other is really powerful. And I think we underestimate that a lot. So there are chakras in the earth. I don't know if anybody knows this. Um, and for me, I was like, what is it? How, how is there sh uh, chakras on the earth? And um, so I started investigating each area and this is what I came up with. So the root chakra is Mount Shasta, um, which is a volcanic glacier. And it's the last time it uh, erupted was like 200 years ago. Um, and for me, for each of the, um, the chakras in the earth, um, there is a lot of uh, geological happenings. So the, a lot of um, any of the, the, um, the major earthquakes that occur in the planet is from the, the, the Gorda Plates, um, which lie like 70 kilometers below Mount Shasta. So, you know, the route, feeling safe, feeling secure, this is, this is where it happens and, it, and it's, and obviously if the, the planet is not feeling safe and secure, it can explain why there's earthquakes, you know? And there's been a lot happening like last year, wasn't there? There was one in Turkey that I, I know of because I was there at the time. But um, so this is my favorite, um, the sacral chakra, Machu Picchu. So um, where um, Machu Picchu is actually located is in between two like plates. So, Machu Picchu is there, and then it's in between two plates. And it is situated on 250 million year old granite, which is crystals. Um, and the way that they've designed it is so clever because obviously there's gonna be um, earthquakes. It's, it's, it's been happening for God knows how long that's been there. And the way that they've, they've built the uh, structures of the buildings that are there is, is all loose. So when, when um, an earthquake happens, everything just moves like this and then just goes back into place again. So it's, it's really fascinating area. Then we have the solar plexus, which is Uluru. And uh, Uluru was under the ocean for about 500 million years. And um, Uluru rock is composed of arc crows, which is granite, again. There's nothing much to say about this one, but... <laughs> And, uh, and then there's Stonehenge, which is, a, is considered a heart chakra. So Stonehenge uh, stones are um, blue stones, which are believed to be quarried from Wales. Um, and they were transported 140 miles uh, away. Now, um, archeologists say <laughs> that it took them 500 years to drag them over, or some believe aliens. So, um, take your pick and what you uh, choose to believe. I mean, 500 years though, <laughs> that's a lot of motivation. Um, so throat chakra, the pyramid. So this, this area is really significant and you can see um, there's a lot of significance that I'm not like um, in terms of in the spiritual sense where the, the pyramids, the, there you have Orion's belt. Um, it's supposed to be directional and all this. So, um, but for me, what I found was that um, uh, the pyramids uh, are made from arco stone and um, yeah and obviously the same stone as uh, Uluru so I thought that was an interesting um, fact. Now the third eye shifts um, every eon or 150-200 years and the significance of this area is um, under, under the main layer I guess is um, iron and there's enough iron that is the same as weight wise as the moon. I don't know how they know that, but they worked out that. <laughs> and uh, so there is a lot of iron underneath like Stonehenge and Glastonbury, which 
again, I thought that was a phenomenal. Um, so you can imagine where these earth chakras are, there is a lot, like I said to you at the beginning, is a lot of geological significance for it to create that energy vortex. And especially if you've got the current and everything and, and people come to these places to heal. And so these are the other areas um, that exist. So you, because um, as with the main chakras within the body, there are smaller chakras as well. Like you've got your hands, they, they have um, chakras in them. Um, and um, the only other place that I've been to on this list is Findhorn. Um, but I don't remember seeing any sort of spiritual or healing centers or anything. We just went to have fish and chips. So um, I can't tell you any interesting facts about that. So the crown chakra, the piece de resistance, right? This is the, the top of the world as is the, the crown chakra, the top um, chakra within your body. And um, it is called the roof, the roof of the world, something like that, roof of the world. And it feeds so many people with the, the water, with um, uh, the land. There's so many people like that the, um, benefit from this area. Um, and it's also called the Tibetan Plateau. So for it to be like the highest mountain, but also the, the crown chakra, I thought, again, that was very, very interesting. And that's why um, monks use it as well. So we're back to energy is everything. So um, E equals MC squared, right? So when you think about energy is everything, when you flip us around, I found this out recently, it's to see me. And in essence, our being is, we are, we are one, we are connected. And if you can really connect with yourself on that deep level, you will understand that. So that's why when um, you go looking for answers, the answer is never on the outside, it's always on the inside. And that's when you have to see yourself for who you are, for what you can be and um and once you have that then you can do anything if you've got any questions <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> well i've got questions here hmm. wow 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 Denise, that was mind blowing. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Oh, I thought I'd lost my earring then. <laughs> any questions? There's a lot of information. <laughs> The point is, it doesn't really matter what, um, as long as you can connect to you, it doesn't really matter about understanding it fully. It's just trusting, surrendering, because there is something um, bigger at play, um, bigger than you. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's all gonna be okay. Oh, I just I just found that information just even like the first part what you what you explained about the different bodies I just thought that was just fantastic and um, one of the things you know my question at the beginning change your mindset to change your life if we're thinking about the mind and the unconscious mind we know that meditation is one of the ways that we can do our inner work and obviously you've worked with me in terms of um, doing some coaching with me and meditation is something I still need to work on my my just the way how it worked out for me yeah. I'm just so conscious like because you spoke about <clears throat> the vibration and that suddenly made me remember when I said in my introduction that my personal development has been more metaphysical one of the areas of that study has been looking at the law of vibration mm -hmm. and what you said was just like oh wow yeah because of course it's asking it shall be given but we do need to do the work 
where do we do the work? We do the work on the inside as well, yeah. as well as taking action. So, so the, uh, the Sisters of Light course that I've put together, so I'm teaching women how to, to do the, the coaching that I'm doing. And um, it's very much a conscious journey. And in the sense that the way that I formatted it is to create awareness to certain things, but also um, when you, sometimes you can't see it. It's, it's not obvious to you and you need that person go, okay, well, actually, you know, you need to, to see this and, and, and you go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And so that guidance, um, because everything is energy, sometimes you can't sense it because you're already in it. You're so acclimatized to it that you don't know other than like whatever it is that just keeps coming up and the same patterns and the same mistakes you keep making, like, why am I doing this? Um, but actually when you, when you, you're able to, to take yourself out of it, out of that energy, and then actually get identified with what it is, then you're able to shift it more because sometimes you can get stuck in the thought. And so when you've got that lower mental body and then you have the emotional body, just um, really disconnecting that energy as an observer, it, that is the technique that I really keep teaching. And sometimes um, when you're in it, again, it's, it's one of those things you're like, oh, what am I supposed to do? It's like, okay, focus on this. Just look at it. <laughs> and it's always the same, but same, same, but different. It's just getting that the, the sort of cues to be able to um, go into it, if that makes sense. So just that, I mean, an emotion is energy in motion, right? So that's all we're doing is creating that space to, to like let it go. So, and we're shifting those negative energy. I didn't really explain that, sorry. You're shifting those, that, that's why it's important to, to create awareness to it. Um, because without it, we just keep experiencing the same emotions, you know, depression, anxiety, and um, whatever it is, the same mistakes, our beliefs, our constant sort of thoughts on lack and all this. So, um, yeah. Denise, in terms of uh, the work that you're doing, I know you've mentioned the Sisters of Life, light program um the emotional fitness do you just want to give us a little bit of an overview about what you're doing there please yeah well um we're launching this uh, membership where people can um come in and uh, we create space for them to let go of their emotions um, so we uh, do a thorough assessment understand where they're at where they're where they're stuck and um we allocate them a coach so that they can, because um, people struggle with their emotions on a daily basis, especially if you've not done this work um, at all, right? You, you've not done any sort of meditation or if you've done meditation, you, you know, I know when, before I did all this, I was just like, I, I don't even think I'd done a meditation. I was just like, what is the point in this? Like, I just didn't get it at all. So um, it's really teaching people how to, to be in it. Um, and I guess understanding that and doing it, it's, it's a practice, right? The more you practice, the better you get at it. Um, and uh, in essence, it becomes where you're, you become more critical of yourself, but it's not necessarily um, in a bad way. It's more of an awareness way. So, um, and, it's, and it's constant growth, right? You're always learning, you're always teaching as well. So, um, it's a process where you can help others as well. That's um, the main thing. Because when you can identify it within yourself, you can identify it within others so easily. Fantastic. I mean, I just wanted to add to that in the sense of what I said before, that thoughts become things. And it's about where you are on that emotional scale. So if you're on yeah. the lower end of the emotional scale and you're thinking quite negatively, then you're, what you're actually going to, what's going to come back to you in terms of the vibration are things that you don't want in your life. And when you have desires and you are actually reaching for things that so we've talked about goals at the beginning of the call, they're rockets of desire. So you want to keep yourself on the higher emotional scale because in a sense, we know that everything's going to be answered. And I just love the way how you've explained how 
the world, the universe, actually, everything's designed in that kind of um, physical sense. You know, you spoke about the crystals being the bones, and I just love that. So it means that as long as we're on the higher emotional scale, then our manifestation is going to come through a lot easier. Yeah, but that's it's what we're doing. Requires, yeah, so it still requires action. So um, we can measure using the Akashic records, you can really tune into um, what vibrational rate a soul is. And so anything, um, I think it's like between four and five, this is the scale that they have, is somebody that exists more in their ego, right? Like they would be listening to this going, what the hell? Um, they would, they would not get that, but anyone but above five. And so, and this is what I find when I do um, the uh, Sisters of Light course, like after about 12 weeks or, and even just one-to-one -one coaching, after 12 weeks, there is awareness of the ego a lot. Whereas before that is like, oh my God, this has happened. And this is not my fault, it's their fault. And, and that's, that's the, the stories, that's the, the conversations that people have. Um, and so as you go along, then between five and six, so six is where you, you are really um, uh, like getting to Mother Teresa level. So um, I think mine is like 5.8, 5.9. So, um, not that I'm saying I'm Mother Teresa, but um, but with, with that, with that vibrational state requires action. So there, you can still be a high vibrational state and still not create anything, right? So there, there is that. And, um, but the thing I like, love about doing this work is you can never go back. It's like, you know, when you're trying to uh, achieve um, physical um, gains in the gym, you know, like even just competing, like I used to compete powerlifting, right? Um, we did, I did like worlds and Europeans and all this sort of stuff. And you do a certain amount of training. And then when you, when, not that I ever really stopped, but you, you have to peak and then you taper off. And so you never really maybe achieve that again, unless you do it again. Uh, whereas when you, your vibration goes up, it never goes down. It's like your, your, your consciousness, you can't make your consciousness smaller. You can't like undo everything all the work that you've done so that's why I enjoy a joy about it because it's like but then it can you can become like a bit of a vibration junkie <laughs> so I've just kind of gone back to just being like yeah I'm not yeah fine don't need to to get any higher right now as long as I the more action I create the more awareness I create the more information I get from the divine that I can actually create and now for me I'm enjoying the creative process like I can write an ebook in like you know half an hour you know if I want to and it comes I'm like oh my god find me a pen and paper and I have to write it down and then I'll get action points and then when I don't I don't force it I just like go with the, the flow when it needs to come you know I create if there's anything that needs like I create space for for information to come because obviously remember that the chakras and the the divine body, I, like I, I can connect to that and then just, say, but, you know, I don't see dead people. That's a different thing, right? So. Denise, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. What I wanted to expand on is um, the women who are in the coaching group, you know that we're going to be looking at the role of the ego further next Thursday. So you'll be hearing my take on that. So just listen to what Denise has said. And then hopefully by the time you hear what I've got to say, it will all make sense. Well, and, let just, um, sorry, let me just make one point about the ego and food, because um, this is something that if, even with all the work that I've done, like, and I know that you guys know this, but um, it was almost like the last thing, because I was always like really good with my diet as a personal trainer. And there's been this transition of like, it's almost like going through like this personal development, I've kind of come back full circle to who I am. So the physical person, the, the person that is like really um, mindful of what they're eating and stuff, but there has been an energetic cut that I had to make with food because, um, and I'm still working on that. I'm not perfect with it, but um, your ego is constantly wanting to distract itself with food and, and, and you can eat mindlessly, you know, just like, 
uh, I mean, I used to constantly as a, as a, as a kid be like blaming my uh, siblings <laughs> for food disappearing off my plate, but actually eating it myself. So that's, this is how disconnected I was with my eating, right? It's like, where's my food gone? Not beating it. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, this sort of thing, I think people do this a lot, um, or associated, um, I guess like going to the cinema, although nobody's going to the cinema and, um, eating, watching a film and eating, like you don't, you can watch a film without eating food, <laughs> you know, this sort of thing. So I think it's important to just be able to create awareness to yourself when it comes to that. Oh, that's fantastic. And for those of you who want to hear about Denise's life doing her squats and that aspect of her journey, you must check out the podcast interview that we recorded a few weeks ago. I actually entitled it, I think it was something like squats and soul alignment, please, something like that, because I was so fascinated with the achievements that you did as a power lifter as well. So thank you so much for sharing those words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I will be listening to this again and, you know, really connecting the dots with what you said and other information that I'm finding out on my own journey. So thank you so much. Um, if you want to, oh, actually, I have to put my slide back up. Denise, do you mind just making me the host again, please? I'm going to leave your contact details on the screen. Thank you, my love. Okie dokie. Um, let's go there. Can you let me know if you can see this, please? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Um, so I've put a slide up here. If you want to, say, to stay connected with Denise, she's spoken to you about the Sisters of Light course that she's uh, going to be doing. I'm actually going to be having some training myself. So I'm so excited about that. Um, please connect with Denise on LinkedIn. Denise, do you have an email that people can reach you on if they wanted to reach you by email? Yeah, do you want me to just check? In the chat. Yeah, if you put that in the chat uh, for any of the women that are on the call and then for any of you that are watching the recording, I will post the email address um, in the comment section of the recording. But thank you so, so much, Denise. Mm -hmm. All right, then. So we are having a break now. If you want a comfort break, if you need to get a drink or uh, take a break for any reason, then please feel free to do so. We will be coming back at five past. So I stopped the recording for the break um, just so that if you want to freely chat amongst yourself, you can do. And for those of you that are watching the recording, then this is a perfect opportunity for you to advertise your health and wellness business in this slot. If this is something that you want to do, my email address is beneath. Please get in contact with me. It's a very low cost opportunity. So uh, in contact with me. All right, then. I'll see you at five past nine.